so I mean, a song like that, I mean, it had that like guitar riff. It almost I, like classic rock and psychedelic rock kind of sounds. Like, were those? Uh, I know those are influences in music as well. Is that something you got into really young as well? I mean, I, I idolized the '60s like a lot of kids from my generation. I was obsessed with Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, The Doors. Obsessed with Can, and Faust, and and uh, getting into all kinds of rock bands from the early days to now. I'm still learning about bands. One thing we we think that we our generation has the most home studios and the most music because it's easier because you could just use a laptop and make a full orchestra with synths and plugins and preset, you know, you know, uh, VSTs and all these different software programs can make anything. But actually, back in the day, you could just come up with $200 and cut a 7-inch in a studio and make a record right there. And then, uh, like Bill Withers, for example, he's so, not to get off on a tangent, but Bill Withers wrote Ain't No Sunshine, and he wrote Lean On Me. And those songs he recorded for himself after building airplane bathrooms, he decided, you know what, I wrote these songs and I want to record them and the only way to do that was to go into a studio and cut the record. Five, uh, right there. So he recorded uh, Ain't No Sunshine and then in the middle of recording the B-side, Lean On Me, he had, he looked up and in the recording window he had like nine record execs arguing over who was going to sign it. And he got signed right there and they made him a millionaire overnight. And um, that's how it used to be. I mean, you could just go in, save your money, and record, and then get it out there. So even though we have the internet now, I mean, people were recording nonstop back in the day, and there's so many influences, there's so many bands that are hidden, like Hawaiian psych bands that you probably have never even heard of that exist right under your nose that were making shit that sounded like that in the 70s, but they only pressed 100 copies of the record, and there were no CDs. There were no cassettes, they weren't, you know, you can't manufacture that. But to manufacture a record back then was not that expensive, so a lot of bands would put out private press records and just unbelievable. Everybody's trying to sound like James Brown and Fela, and everybody's trying to sound like Jimi Hendrix, but they are all garage bands of kids trying to sound like that, and it creates this amalgamation of fucking gorgeous music that was made by 16-year-olds in a basement. Some of that stuff is actually better than all of the over-processed, over-produced shit we have now. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I'm, I'm sure. always influenced by that. <laughs> I mean, I